Section 4.1 is called Classifying Triangles. There are two different ways to classify triangles. The first way we're going to look at is by the measure of their angles. So an acute triangle has three acute angles. Recall that acute means the measure of the angle is less than 90. So this first triangle here has three angles that all measure less than 90 degrees. Next type of triangle is an equiangular triangle. It has three congruent acute angles. This is a special type of an acute triangle. The next type is an obtuse triangle and it has one obtuse angle. And the last type of triangle is a right triangle and it has one right angle. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. <coughs> this says classify each triangle as acute, equiangular, obtuse, or right. So example number one has a 40 degree angle, a 90 degree angle, and a 50 degree angle. So that would make this a right triangle. Example number two has a 70 degree angle. Actually it has two 70 degree angles and a 40 degree angle. All three of those are acute, so this would be considered an acute triangle. Number three has a 20 degree angle, a 130 degree angle, and a 30 degree angle. And notice that one of the angles is greater than 90. 130 degrees is an obtuse angle, so this is an obtuse triangle. And our last example here has three 60 degree angles, and all of the angles are the same measure, so this is an equiangular triangle. Notice that with all of these triangles, I said nothing about the lengths of the sides, only the measures of the angles. Which means the second way to classify triangles is by the length of sides. An equilateral triangle has three congruent sides. And remember we note that by, oops, excuse, sorry about that. We note that by uh, putting the little hash marks on the three sides. An isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides. And since it says at least two congruent sides, and an equilateral triangle has at least two congruent sides, an equilateral triangle is a special type of isosceles triangle. And the third type of triangle is a scalene triangle. And that has no congruent sides. All three sides are different lengths. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. If M is the midpoint of JL, classify each triangle in this diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark a few things on here. M is the midpoint of JL, so that means JM is also the same length. And if JL is 1.5, then both JM and ML must be half of that since M is the midpoint. So now let's take a look at each triangle here. So the large triangle triangle JKL has a side that's 0.75, one side that's 1.3, and one side that's 1.5. So that's going to be a scalene triangle. All the sides are different lengths. Let's take a look at triangle JKM. JKM has, well actually I forgot to mark the middle one here. Since this has one hash mark on it, segment KM is also 0.75. So that's going to make triangle JKM an equilateral triangle because all the sides are the same length. And our last triangle is triangle KML. And that has one side that's 0.75, another side that's 0.75, and one side that's 1.3. Two sides are congruent, so that's going to be an isosceles triangle. <clears throat> Here's a couple more examples. This says find the length of each side of the triangle. Notice the little hash marks here that AC is congruent to BC. So if AC equals CB, then I can say that 4x minus 13 equals 12 minus x, and I'm just going to go ahead and solve that for x, 5x, oops, 5x equals 25, or 
x equals 5. Now I'm not done, I have to find the length of each side. So AC is the same as CB, and I can choose either one of those to plug the 5 into. Maybe I'll go with the uh, 12 minus x. Is 12 minus 5, or those two are both 7 in length. And then AB is x plus 6, which is going to be 5 plus 6, or AB is 11. So once you find x, plug it back in to find the length of each side. Find the length of each side of triangle DEF. And what I notice about triangle DEF is that it's actually um, an equilateral triangle. All three of the sides are congruent. So I can just pick any two sides I want and solve for x. So if I say DF is equal to FE, I could write 2x plus 5 equals 3x minus 3. Solving for x, x equals 8. I could have chosen uh, df and de, or fe and de. It doesn't matter, they're all the same. So all of the sides are going to be the same. df is going to be equal to fe, which is going to be equal to de. And when I plug that back in, uh, maybe I'll take uh, 2x plus 5. 2 times 8 plus 5 is going to give me 21. So each side of this triangle is 21. And again, I could have taken that x, that 8 for x and plugged it into any of the sides. It would be the same for all of them.